is here. The champ is here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's your boy Champ, and this is the Champ is Here show. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Mr. Long Champ here, co-hosting. Co-hosting. Quick shout out to the o- oh, yeah. Quick shout out to the audience. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. You know, if you guys are liking the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That's a Fendi. That's a Fendi. So, first and foremost, I'd like to just show the outfit real quick. <laughs> yeah, that is cut off. I just, I, I just wanted to do that real quick. You know what I'm saying? Then anyway. Anyway. Camp is here. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Camp is in the building. So um today I have I want to talk about um the greatest book in human history, one of the greatest books in human history. I wanted to talk about the most motivational book in human history. It's going to be a little controversial. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But. Ooh. Oh, we, we've, we've talked a little bit about the B-I-B-L-E. We talked a little, you brought, you brought up a story yeah. or two here in yeah, the day, back, back in the day. So the Very reason young. why I'm bringing it up, right? Because we're going back, we're going back to our roots. We're going back to motivation, spirituality. And uh, I wanted to touch on that. Now, you can look at the book as a, something, you know, as theologians do. Um, I don't look at it that way. Be, before, I used to look at it as a theologian. Then I looked at it as a conspiracy theorist, saying that mm. poking holes in it. And whatever mm-hmm. your mindset is, is the way you're going to perceive it. You're, that's, that's just where your mindset's going to be. But um, once I got into the experiment science, I saw it in the spirit science aspect. Then I saw it in an esoteric mindset. And then last but not least, I saw it as a business, a business mindset. And I'll touch on that. So this is, I don't believe that the stories necessarily are real. I think they're based off of situations that are real. I think, I don't believe that all of the characters in his books are real. I'll give you an example. You see the first real estate transaction was between Adam and God. You see God gave Adam a piece of land and made him the property manager. He said, hey, listen, okay. I need you to do this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying to you? So giving, getting into the real estate. Right, giving into real estate. You see what I'm saying to you? So what I mean by that too is, then the next thing, he had a help me. You know what I'm saying to you? Eve came through and made sure everything was done. He had help and that's what women do. Women are your partners. They are your business partners. They are your mastermind group when you collaborate. So those are one of the key things that I, I noticed that's in there. Another great example that is how it's motivation um, and sacrifice is the story of Abraham. You see in the story of Abraham, if guys, people are not familiar, he had a wife named Sarah and um, God made a promise with him and said, hey, listen, Abraham, don't worry. I'm going to give you a kid. But he was really, really old. I think he was like in the, I don't know, like in the 300, 400, something like that. Something like that. I don't remember. I'm not a theologian. So he gave him a son. And when he gave him the son, he told him, listen, if you really love me, Abraham, I need you to kill him. Now, that sounds a little crazy to me, but his son represents what he loved the most. You follow what I'm saying to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you wanted the sons, you wanted the kids so bad. And the minute he gave it to him, he says, yo, I'm going to give you a test and not even let you know that it's a test. He said, give up the thing that you love the most. That's what the message is. So what do you love the most? Is it TV shows? Is it playing ball? Is mm. it smoking weed? What do you love the most? You got to be willing to give that up to get willing to give up. You feel what I'm saying to you? Yeah, I love, yeah, yeah. You know, before I love blowing it down. But I said, you know, time to time, I say I'm going to go to 30 days, 90 days until I met a gentleman that told me, he's like, yo, I've been doing a year. And I said, a year? And you know, I love a challenge. I'm sitting <laughs> in the truck. I'm like, yo, God, the universe, is that, you, is that what you're telling me? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give that up. And I want to see how my life elevates, how everything comes together for me, elevates. There's, I have no, I have no um, urge. My mind is clearer. The excitement is back. The pizzazz is there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is in the building. You feel what I'm saying to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before I could remember where I parked my car, I had to walk around the block to figure it out. And sometimes it would be right, like a few houses away, but I'm just Pressing walking. The button. Choo, choo. Not choo. Even. That's smart. <laughs> I didn't do that. That's smart. <laughs> I never did that. You see what I mean? There's a lot of things that's in there. Um, what's another, another great? Okay, Moses. Moses, when he freed the Israelites, guess where they went? They didn't go straight to the land of Canaan, the land of milk and honey, immediately. It's only when you get there within a few days. But he had to take them in the desert, in the forest, lost, walking for 40 years. You see, sometimes it's called a karmic cycle if you want to get spiritual with it. Sometimes when you don't learn what you're supposed to learn, you're going to go in circles for a little while. You're going to go in circles for a little bit. Sometimes God or the universe, or they're going to show you, they're going to give you the same things over, put you in the same situation, just a little different with different people. To, to, you know what I mean? Different environment, but it's going to be the same thing to test you to test you. You see, I've been tested um, beginning of this year. I've been tested last year. Certain people I had to let go. Certain things I had to give up. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm going in circles and circles. And once I was able to let those go, sacrificing like Abraham, going through the desert like Moses, till I got to the promised land. You know what I'm saying to you? So yeah, yeah. certain things I could go on and on and on. There's a story about Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, three brothers who were captured and they were they were um, uh, uh, prisoners of Babylon, which is um, which was uh, ancient Sumeria, where Abraham was from, which is today Iraq and Iran. You see, when they were captured. The king there, I'm not sure what his name was. I can't remember his name. I believe it was Nebuchadnezzar. I believe. Don't quote me on this. Should have did my research. But the king told them, said, listen, I'm going to have you compete against my greatest warriors, my <laughs> sportsmen. You know what I mean? He put it like, it was like the games. And he said, eat, eat a feast pork, beef, lamb, all that. Mm, all that. All that. All that. <laughs> you said, we good. You see, what we're going to eat, we're going to eat God's food. That's what they said. I didn't say it. They said it. What's God's food? Provision. All they ate was the potatoes and the yams and the banana and the mm. yuk and the kale and the celery and the spinach 
And the carrots. The carrots. The, ooh. I can mm-hmm. keep... The mushroom. They ate those things. They ate the food from the earth because the earth gives you everything that you need. And right now, the earth is giving me everything that I need. I don't want to chill. Mm-hmm. I don't Game is games. Hey, hey, I see you. <laughs> About to bust out there. <laughs> I was a little chubby. You know what I mean? But then they outperformed. He out they, those three brothers outperformed. You see in the story, it's like, oh, 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 it was God, it was God. Yeah, I get it. But that story is telling you about nutrition. That's what this book is telling you about. If you lead, if you're reading it from an esoteric view, like myself, like you, right, right, right. You know what I mean? I can go on. Oh, yeah. I was gonna add. Can I? Can I add one real quick? Oh, a short, yeah, short tidbit. Real, me. real, real quick. And just a little. It's uh. I was I was listening to a motivational speaker, and he was bringing it up, and he's like, "I'm not really a religious dude, but just real quick, I just wanted to bring up the fact that like Jesus Christ didn't start his ministry until he was like 30 years old." He's like, you mean to tell me you wasn't able to walk on water 30, 33? I thought that's when it ended. I apologize. But yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend, 33. Either way, even more, even more, even longer. So it's like, you wasn't able to walk on water when he was like 12? None of that. But uh, it's just to show you that he was taking that time to learn and listen before he was able to really go on that mission. So it's just, a, you know, he was bringing that up just to, you know, let you know to be coachable. You have two ears and one mouth so you have to use them accordingly and that's definitely something that i'm you know learning a lot more from you guys my mentors so you know what i mean like before you before before you you get to that next level there's, there's always going to be a lot more that you can learn from the wiser one listen i'm happy that you brought that guy up um you see what was happening was people don't know that as a man um, your brain doesn't chemically mature until it's about 26, 28. Yeah. And um, basically they don't know that in those, in the New Testament, they're talking about the mind. That's what they're really talking about. Christ is the mind. Really talking about the subconscious mind. That's what they're really talking about. What do you mean? I'm going to tell you what I mean right now. You see, when he started his ministry, it's talking about mastery. He took the time to master himself, to master. You see, before he could be a leader, he had to master himself. You see, like I said before, in order to be the, a follower, to be a follower is a, is a gift that they give a leader. A leader cannot be a leader without having followers to a certain degree. You see, you can go out there and lead by example. You're a leader, but to actually have followers. So the disciples, and um, I want to get into that a little. No, not right now in a different show, but the disciples really start, really are examples of the 12 disciplines that you need to master. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, See, yeah, Simon, yeah. Simon, I believe Simon was the first disciple and that discipline is to listen. What did he tell Simon to do? He said, listen, throw your net. He said, Jesus, I've been here all night, baby. Ain't no fish out here. Ain't no fish out here. He's like, no, listen, throw the fish. Just do it. Just try it. You know, he didn't break down the science. He just had to be say, "Yo, listen. All right, you so you know what? I'm gonna do it." He threw the fish, and what happened? They were busting the nets, and he had to call his mans to come through. We need backup. <laughs> Discipline is to listen, and I believe the second one was on uh, Peter. Peter means rock or stone. So the first one, when you listen, it is now to have faith. The first one is to have faith. The second one is to have, to strengthen that faith. I can skip over to Judas now, because I don't want to, Judas, 
Judas now is uh, what happens when you um, don't discipline, when you, when you, when you master your, 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 your disciplines, you graduate to apostleship. You become an apostle. Now your disciplines come unconscious competence. You're just doing it unconsciously. That's when that happens now. But if you don't master your disciplines, those disciplines betray you. Ooh, they betray you just like Judas did. That's what happens if you don't master those things. And last but not least, just to wrap it up, you see Jesus is the conscious mind. That's what I was telling you earlier. Right. So what happens is he developed one of the most famous mastermind groups. So when you have a mastermind group, me, you, Chris, when we're collaborating, the three of us, a fourth brain comes above us and we're all able to tap in into that brain. It's called a mastermind. Me and you can just do it. We're masterminding right now. Right, 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 right. One of the famous words Jesus said, when two or three are gathered in my name, in my name. Mm -hmm. their presence. Ooh. That's dope, that's dope. Ooh. <laughs> Hello. Talk to him. <laughs> I'm talking. I'm talking. Okay. I'm talking tonight. Shout out to my boy for the waters. <laughs> oh, no, I'm telling you, it's in here. So when you read basic it, basic instructions, basic go. instructions before leaving Earth. There you go. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. I'm telling you. -E. Mm -hmm. Read it like um, what are, what's the what's the other um famous Greek book stories that have uh, all those stories um um. You know what I'm talking about. I can't. They, this I slipped the, the, the tip of my tongue. Remember, like um, the Odyssey. Oh, 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 oh. You know when they have all these stories, all these alleg, you know, like the allegory of the cave. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of these stories. Yes, this is what I'm telling you. But this is what this book. It's a book of different stories, of different situations, of different people, and how they overcame adversity. David and Goliath. Talk to me, okay. Goliath. When you see a big problem and you say, "Oh my God, how am I gonna take this over?" But if you got, if you got the big guy on your side, if you have faith, you know that you can conquer anything. You can defeat it. What's the famous um, quote? If you have a problem that money can solve. And you don't have a problem. I don't have a problem. <laughs> that's a fact. You see what I'm saying to you? So that's it. So that's before, before, oh, my fault, guys. You know what I mean? So, yo, guys, this is a great read. Um, Every week, I'm going to come up with a different book. Well, not every week. Cause, um, yeah, because we're going to have some interviews here and there, too. Yeah, we're going to have some interviews. Uh, So basically, my goal this year, as you know, 52 books um on my first so i'm not on track but i'm gonna make up for it but um yeah 52 books average ceo 52 books, mm -hmm. books. so, so what i wanted to ask you real quick talk to me was it was uh if you're changing or if you're not changing because news had that big blockbuster trade this you know today with Harden going to the Nets. Are you still you still you still riding with the Lakers with, with your pick with your NBA pick? They make it a little bit more challenging, but yes, I'm still riding with my pick. The reason why I'm okay. still riding with my pick is because now there's a new player coming back on the team. It's now the it's, it's a chemistry shift. I'm not saying they can't do it. It's a chemistry shift. The way if you know I'm a coach, so what I would do is. I have at least one of them come off the bench. Have his okay. off the bench. Then they, I, I believe that they can definitely do it. But if who you, would you have? If you put three of them, um, I would be interchanging. You know, Kyrie got to stay on the floor. It would just have to be between um KD, sometimes some nights, or Harden on the on the some nights. Interesting. Interesting. I, yeah, just no egos. Come off the bench, cause listen, you put three of those shooters on the on the court. Guess what? When timeout comes, all three of them is coming out. I think I, I think possibly Harden may be more susceptible to it only because 
Uh, he's a Virgo. I mean, as far as we're going to talk about like personality, he very did. tough to, yeah, tough to uh, come off the bench. Facts. I don't know, bro. KD, I don't know if he's coming off the bench. But yeah, but anyway, it was a great show. Yes, sir. It was a great show. Um, so is that what do you do? You have anything else? No, nah, that's it. All right, guys. Um, listen, big shout out. So um, I want to shout out Long Champ Success. I want to shout out um, Lee Realty Group. I want to shout out the Brook and Cove Yacht Club. You no, know, we are doing big things, working on our soft opening. So just doing those things. And um, that's basically it. Shout out BT Group. And um, guys, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Cheers.